Vice President for Campaign says working extra hours puts major pressure on young people. Many students are dropping out and sort of facing these cost of living pressures. Education should be a right and it shouldn't have to be having to work additional hours just to attain that right. The initial call for the abolition of the sub minimum wage rate was made by the union mandate who's called the practice highly discriminatory. On Post has blamed the rising cost of transport, fuel and energy for its latest price hike. From next month, the price of a domestic stamp will go up by 10 cent to 1 euro 35. It comes after Guinness supplier Diageo announced a 12% increase in the price of drinks. These people in Dublin were asked how much they'd be willing to spend on a pint. That is very expensive, actually. I remember when I was a child being sent into the shop to like get a stamp and it was definitely not that much. Do they not used to be like 60 cent? That's so expensive. Oh my God. I won't be sending any of them anymore. <laughs> 125. I won't be sending them. I didn't send them. I won't be sending them now. <laughs> Listen, if you love somebody, 125 doesn't really matter. <laughs> and that's your news update. It's two minutes past seven. News talk weather. Thanks to Ryanair. Best present ever. Give them a Ryanair gift card and they love you forever. Heavy outbreaks of rain will spread eastwards across the country this evening as winds become strong and gusty. Highs of 9 degrees Celsius. Now you're up to date on News Talk. The News Round on Off The Ball. With Gillette. Start your day in flow with the new Gillette Labs Razor with exfoliating bar. This is News Talk. Welcome along. Busy show. Emma Byrne and Louise Galvin on maternity care in sport, in particular the WSL, which was the focus of a high profile interview on the Coy Gig podcast, is being discussed both sides of the Irish Sea over the last 24 hours or so. So we'll play you some of that interview and talk to Emma and Louise. Keith Wood and Gordon Darcy are on Wednesday Night Rugby. We have Dan McDonnell on the football show after 9. 53106, the text number. We're at Off the Ball on Twitter. Michael McCarthy here in studio. Hello. How's it going, Joe? And Richie McCormick is with us. Good evening. Evening, gents. How are you? Yeah, very well. Kenny Cunningham uh, signed off yesterday by promising to watch the US office. So if nothing else, there is that from yesterday's show. I'm with Kenny on the US office, I have to say, without getting back into it again. It's like a good show, good sitcom, but it's taking, it, it loses all of the genius of what made the original office, one of the best pieces of television of all time. You see, it's okay to be wrong sometimes, Michael, and I think it's good. Yeah, and and thank you for admitting it, Joe. Raising that. Thank you for admitting being wrong. Even you will concede Steve Carell puts in a performance of genius. It's good. And Look, I mean, even the first season when it's basically just a a, a, a literal just remake Mm. of the uh, original office, it's fine. But then it just becomes standard sitcom. Good one, but a standard sitcom. The first series. The first series, because it retreads the English one, is very bad because of it. When it goes off and does its own thing, yes, it ends up fair. being it's a much, much better TV show. But still generic. Let's avoid a remake of last night's show. Yeah, I agree. I just hadn't offered my own opinion. No, on. that's fine. Yeah. It's fine. And, you know, Richie and I are comfortably uh, correct here in, in the eyes of the vast, vast majority. <laughs> I just I think enjoy it's, that comfort. Yeah, the vast majority, the, the, the public likes what the, the broad comedy, I agree. Uh, guess what most of my uh, communication has involved over the last 24 hours. Is it your new Nokia 3310? Correct. Yeah. A lot of intrigued parties. Yeah. Well, Wait, a lot, what? A lot of comments. Oh, Richie doesn't listen to the show. Are you not listening to a slight tangent last night? Uh, I was covering the Caribou cocaine show. Uh, have, have you got a, 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 a burner? Have you got a burner kind of uh, dealer phone there, have you? I have. Can you see us, by the way? I can't remember. You can. I can see you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look That's at this beauty, Richie. Picture, a, yeah. a Nokia 3310. Oh, good God. Why? Oh, because Why? Of the obvious. Spending far too much time looking at the other thing. I wow. Okay. That's... It's he also like wants old... to get back his snake game. He's let it fall over the last 20 years. Does it have snake? It does, yeah. I'm playing oh, it, yeah. class. That'd defeat the purpose if I got addicted to snake. <laughs> Bloody low snake. Snake was about. Can you can you um, tabulate your own ringtones as well? The same way you used to be able to do it at 3310? Um, oh, yeah. Know, uh, is it polyphonic? It is polyphonic. Right, okay. Oh, brilliant. Big step. Mm. I got master of puppets as my ringtone. Yeah, I'll be ringing yeah. those hotlines where you could order them and get them sent. Is Crazy Frog still on the go? Absolutely I don't know. Is, yeah. don't know. There are yeah, a lot of parents yeah. who got bills back in the day. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what uh, a world. It's going to be so much hassle, though. I really, in the last 24 hours, even since we spoke, 
I was in the old shop today mm. and realised oh, I have to transfer money. Oh God! Uh-oh. Right? Yeah, there you go. I was not a goer on the old Nokia. <laughs> Thankfully, yeah. I wasn't on my own, and the situation could be rectified. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Joe, you you do realise that if people see you out like talking in that thing while you're out in the street, they are just going to presume you're a drug dealer. Yes, that that's what happens. Like. Maybe I am. Maybe it's, maybe it's the we, perfect maybe cover. Joe can maybe Joe can you know reinvent the image of people with standard Listen. non-smartphones uh, to not just be drug dealers yeah. and maybe <laughs> Joe is a perfect he's a public face uh, of well, he's not been getting paid by Nokia I was just going to say I'm, I'm willing to be paid by Nokia <laughs> <laughs> but, so but so far you've paid them but so far I'm a smallish fee 59 euro down 59 euro I called it 50 yesterday I was yeah. embarrassed <laughs> <laughs> you said I overpaid <laughs> well I just think that the, the technology is from 20 years ago you know, it costs a lot to build the first phone. I would imagine that phone by now, when they've made billions of them, probably cost them about 35 cents. Yeah. So you're being screwed. I won't uh, labour the point if this goes on. I'll keep you and the listeners, because genuinely people who are interested, uh, semi-updated on the progression here. And you see, I still do have the old um, iPhone, which with Wi-Fi, because nobody texts and everybody WhatsApp, still works largely as it had been working. But what I did find was, so the big step forward was the phone was out of the bedroom completely last night and uh, definitely better at night time because, you know, you're struggling to fall asleep. That urge to reach over and grab, uh, see what's going on is now not there because you look over and see my sad, sorry Nokia and the iPhone's, you know, downstairs. But I tell you what, the morning time, I was hearing, you know, I was comparing Colin Farrell and Golden Globe. Mm. And I went, I, straight away went to reach, did he? <laughs> Damn you, Nokia. Good speech. I, well, that's what I was going on to watch. You haven't seen it? No. <laughs> Joe doesn't know. Joe's got to be an uninformed person on the <laughs> show from now on. But then, I guess the point was, so you, that's not, you can't start your day then by getting into that watching Farrell's speech, then watching 10 other things. And then, so you, yeah. so I, I got downstairs and had a more, uh, a calmer first half hour, 45 minutes of my day, and then popped open the laptop and had that blitz of dopamine and caught up yeah. with everything. Can I ask if your good lady wife has taken the same move in her... Uh, is she also doing this? If she had, we wouldn't have been able to pay for our shopping today. Yeah. So no. So what I'm has, saying has is no like, intention of doing it. Is, so if her ha- so are you kind of like imposing this on her? So she's trying to have her coffee in the morning and scroll or whatever, and you're just like, oh, hey, no. can we have a chat about life and talk about you no, know the gonna, lovely day? And I'm not going to be that guy. The autumn. No, no, no. I'm not going to be those winter. Not, no, I'm not going to do that. Like obviously, I'm inwardly, I'm feeling incredibly superior, but I'm not going to voice that to people. Okay. Aside from so you're just going to sit okay. there quietly and take in the take in the world. I'll, I'll reflect on just how impressive I am. Quietly, you start buying a physical newspaper. No, get it delivered to your door. No, because I like I'm a pragmatist here. Like I'm not ditching the the iPhone, which gets a bit of Wi-Fi, and so it means I can WhatsApp people back. But it's it's very much on my terms, and so you, it's more about like specifically saying I'm going to open the laptop now and get back to people mm-hmm. in this 10, 15 I minutes, l- and then close it back down and. I'm I'm free and and crucially, I can still be texted or called. You know, yeah, this yeah, thing. yeah, You're not you're not closing yourself off in the no, world. No, the biggest bummer actually will be photos. Yeah, although you do have a, a little camera on that thing. I, I don't know if they'll age all that well. <laughs> I, I think the pixels might be an issue. So yeah. that that is the kind of issue. But then, again, as you said, um, there will be between the two of us a good phone with camera. There you go. Somewhere. Yeah. So just, anyway, just I don't want to yabber on about this much longer. Richie has one question. Though. Final thoughts, Richard. Like. I, I'm just astounded by all of this. Really? really? Uh, I kind of am. But I like I like the the kind of uh, the subtext to this, which is far too many people are trying to get hold of me. I just want to leave the phone over there. <laughs> just want to leave the phone over there and not talk to my general unwashed public I or wish. indeed family members or indeed friends. No, I wish. Do you know the, the what what it has done is actually highlighted that really not many people are trying to reach me at any time. <laughs> That's been the, the big learning. That most of my phone time is nobody reaching me but me just scrolling. I've just been yeah, told that true. by someone that we both know that Joe Malloy getting a 3310 is the most Joe Malloy thing I've ever heard. Who said that? Just someone we both know. Do they work for Off The Ball? Used to. <laughs> <laughs> Used to. So I know this person's a bit Don't more Don't work it out on air. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Give me a clue. It's my wife. <laughs> that's the clue I don't know if you know who that's that is so, that's so oh, I used to know who that was yeah. no I, I, I'll take that from Sue I think it's fair she means that as a compliment I think 
That's she also says that you never text back anyway. So. <laughs> That's not well. Uh, on June upgrade, and I'm undecided between the iPhone 12, 13, or Nokia 2260. I don't know enough about the Nokia 20. I don't know the numbers, I have to say, on Nokia's. I do think if I was going cold turkey for just one, that you'd get whatever one could handle WhatsApp. That's maybe my one slight bit of buyer's remorse. Which one did Enda have for years? Remember Enda Kenny was going around with a brick in his hand. What was that? 5510 or something like that. Mm. I lost track of what went on after 3310s in the Nokia world. I just tuned in purely to see the 3310. Has Joe got himself a special presenter's chair, says Keenan Moot? Uh, no but there is a new presenter's chair. I'm not sure about the visuals of it. I think it's a bit too big, but it's very comfortable. So <laughs> we're going and with it. The reason we were giving is that you could easily swivel over and talk to the pe- person on the other the other side of the studio. It's rarely there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah once a week. <laughs> <laughs> really comes in handy that Sunday. Uh, on OCVAM, right. they use it a bit more than we do. do they? Well, I have yeah. to say, it's a pleasure to sit on. <laughs> you look great. It's heated. <laughs> is it? No, come on. <laughs> we should Richard, you'll on. find out next week. The oh, well, yeah. news round is brought to you with Gillette Labs for an effortless finish to your day. And uh, I, I hadn't realised this, Richie. I've just seen this now. Roy Barrett yeah. has uh, stepped down. Yeah, he's decided to step down as FAI Independent Chairman. It's a role he's held since 2020. Independent Director Gary Tuhig has also resigned his post and will not be seeking ratification at the resumed AGM on January 21st. Barrett says his decision paves the way for ensuring that at least 40% of the directors are female by the end of 2023. I'm open to correction here. My sense is that Roy Barrett came in as a very respected person, a person of great sense and steadied the ship massively, brought a degree of authority to the situation and was a big supporter of Stephen Kenny and departs, I think, having done a a very solid job. Am I wrong in my general thinking there? I think think that's fair. I think I was listening in on the AGM call, the latest attempt at it, um, was it last month before Christmas? And the 40% uh, female directors issue was a real sticking point. Like whatever about uh, ratifying certain members, that getting to 40% was a huge, it seemed like it was a huge issue for them. And I think he's just probably took the bit between his teeth there and decided that me stepping down, Gary Tuig stepping down is going to clear the way and allow this to, to run more smoothly than perhaps it has been up until this point. But it's... Um, I don't know. It, it, it's something of a surprise. I don't think anybody really saw it coming from a mile off. I didn't hear any whispers about it. Um, but I, you, you can only presume. He, he was a very steady hand. I think is probably the best thing we can yeah. we can say about him. Even though last he three years. hasn't tried to completely overstay his welcome and build his own dynasty. No, literally, <laughs> what I was about to say. I think that's at odds with every other administrator. It's nearly up. key now, isn't it? Because in the reform of the FAI, we were talking. You know, people were temporary, and then they weren't temporary anymore, and they were steady in the ship, but then they were there for good. And I think it's very important that we have people kind of in and out. And not any, you know, that look, that was the problem. And before it was that, like, you know, we had the same people for a long time who were, you know, at the very least, you know, telling each other that things were fine. You know, that's at the very, very least. And there was no outside voices. And now with the independent uh, director's mandate, or, you know, the, the not mandate, but requirement, and with, you know, two directors moving on and 40%, everything everything suggests that there's just going to be a little bit more fluidity as to who is the FAI at any one time. Okay. So Owen Farrell's going to tackle school. Yes, indeed he is. Uh, <laughs> England will statement. almost certainly be able to call upon Owen Farrell for their opening Six Nations fixture with Scotland on February 4th. The out half received a four-week ban for that dangerous tackle on Gloucester's Jack Clement. However, the last week of that ban will be scrubbed if Farrell completes a tackling coaching course. Meanwhile, England flanker Tom Curry is going to miss that game with Scotland due to a hamstring injury. It's hoped he'll be back for the third round against Wales. So it seems, I mean, I hate the game, not the player. Owen Farrell and England are taking advantage of every aspect here of rugby's disciplinary paraphernalia. Mm. Made the tackle. Arms were low, shoulder was high. Uh, Gordon Darcy and Wednesday Night Rugby later on has, has faced that exact tackle from that exact player and can, will speak after 8 o'clock as to just how brilliantly effective it is. So there's a reason Owen Farrell does it. But he did obviously catch Jack Clement's head. Six weeks is the mid-range entry point. Uh, mitigation brought him down to four weeks and then it's reduced to three weeks if he attends tackle school. And of those three games, one of them is the Bristol game on January 28th, without getting too into the machinations of this, but one of them is the Bristol game. That's his third game. Now, if he was named, if he is named in the England squad, none of that squad will play that round of fixtures. 
So he'd miss the Bristol game wouldn't count as his third game and he would miss the Scotland game. However, if Steve Borthwick, when he names the squad, omits own Farrell, then the Bristol game will count as one of his three games. And then Steve Borthwick is perfectly entitled to belatedly call oh, own Farrell into nice. the squad. Yeah. That is a shambles. <laughs> I don't know, a shambles is the word for it. How ridiculous. Like, sorry, the, the tackle school thing is the f- most farcical thing of all. I don't know if everybody else has an image of like a bad, like, uh, US teen film where he's going to driver's ed school or something like that, you know, <laughs> turning up in his full England gear. You know, it's like, you know, teach, put me, you know, he's a guy, you know, he's in detention or whatever, and this is way out oh, of the like, Troy you know. McClure video. <laughs> there's a Troy McClure video <laughs> written all over it. Players getting decapitated. <laughs> O'Farrell's the only adult in the room, you know. Um, that's kind of what this feels like, but. Will he know, have to wear his shorts in the classroom? That's like, what I do. I don't know. Full, full gear. Um, but it's, it's farcical. Like, and again, I just. If the mid range is six weeks, what are the mitigation? Like it's just it's not it's not clear. I, he, he didn't actually his mitigation. He, 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 no, it he, says it, it says it in the report his mitigation was that he apologized afterwards to Clement yeah. and that he he acknowledged there was uh, foul play, albeit he didn't admit that it was a red card. Uh, he acknowledged it was foul play and his c- conduct during the uh, disciplinary process is also taken into account. So that chalks off two matches. And. It's very hard to suggest that that's nothing to do with the fact that England have a Six Nations game at the no, exact sorry, deadline. The mitigation is always that. That's why you yeah. often see players tweeting apologies and texting apologies, and it's all to play the system. Yeah, but the system is stupid. Like, it's like either the ban is six weeks or it's not. You know, like this. Yeah. Like, well, like there was a similar behave themselves. There's, there's a similar incident in front. Well, not similar, but. In in terms of mitigation, how it, it seems sillier in this instance because uh, the uh, Perpignan captain Aseb, his first name escapes me at the minute. He's essentially received a seventeen week ban. He went in head first on Jean Tendanti while playing against La Rochelle. Uh, he got a seventeen week ban. That was chopped down to nine because of his good behaviour yeah. and his you know uh, cooperation with the with the process and all that. So seventeen down to nine seems more egregious than chopping two off of six. Really, yeah, it does all right. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to be a real idiot to not get some medication. You know, just set an apology. Don't behave terribly at the hearing. Like, honestly, <laughs> it, it it just, you just have to say that, do you know what, the the mid-range for this is mm. a four-week ban instead of a six-week ban. Maybe. You know? He, by the way, didn't even get the full mitigation because he'd been banned for five weeks for a similar tackle back in 2020, so it could have been even more mitigation. Mm. Uh, Michael Moore has texted in, I don't think it's the Michael Moore. Has he made any documentaries recently? No. Not sure. He has a podcast. Sure, Who doesn't, says you. But uh, I don't know if he's made anything recently. Sure, I look it up while you're reading out the text? Well, he texted in to say, Ender Kenny had a 6310i. Great phone, he says. Maybe he's making a documentary about Ender Kenny's phones. Maybe. <laughs> 6310i. Oh, God. Michael, um, yeah. Is there a thing with the US presidents that they're not allowed certain types of phones? Blackberries were... Had security issues. Uh, Blackberries. They were a great phone. Um, I don't have the answer to this. He seems to have made a, <laughs> another Fahrenheit movie about Trump in 2018. Okay. A follow on to his George Bush one. He did one on Wall Street as well in the crash. Okay. Uh, the Carabao Cup uh, continues. So we had Newcastle and Manchester United coming through last night. What have we got tonight? Yeah. Uh, Brian Clough was still in charge of Nottingham Forest the last time they reached the semi-finals. They take on Wolves at the City Ground tonight. Both Nathan Collins and Joe Hodge on the Wolves bench. That game kicks off at 7.45. Gavin Bazunu is tasked with keeping his former side at bay as sit down to play host to Manchester City. Uh, Calvin Phillips starts for City in that one. Kickoff at St. Mary's is at 8. The draw for the semi-finals will be made afterwards. And uh, another point to that Southampton Manchester City game. Jason Wilcox is to join the Saints as director of football, having resigned his role as academy director at Manchester City. OK, we'll keep you across those games this evening. Uh, Dan McDonnell in after nine. I was asking Dan anything you want to talk about. Apparently, Eddie Howe let the cameras into the dressing room. Oh, I saw Dan night. Byrne dancing. Was this a, just a, a stationary camera in the corner of the dressing room? Or it wasn't a camera crew, I presume? Mm, I'm not sure, actually. The only thing I saw was Dan Byrne doing his dancing, so I couldn't tell whether it was in there with... Uh, whether it was... It looked pretty good camera. I don't think I don't think it was... Uh, I'd, I'd say it's it was... like the rugby cameras in... Uh, that are just, in no, it wasn't in the corner and okay. the sort of bubble camera. It wasn't like Actual that. Actual camera. Yeah, yeah, Interesting. Yeah. He's, I mean, he can do no wrong, Eddie, at the moment. He's such a good bloke, isn't he? Such a <laughs> bloody great bloke. <laughs> 
<laughs> Calm down there, Richie. Uh, yeah, he, he's on the crest of a wave at the moment. Somebody texted in to a slight tangent last night. We never answered the uh, question. Okay. If Eddie Howe, if you were Eddie Howe and you were offered the Manchester United job in the morning, would you take it? Oh, yeah, it was a good, straightforward question, actually, wasn't it? Yeah. It was, uh, yes, I think. Would you? Yeah, because I think no matter what you do with Newcastle... Sorry, I don't know why I said that. I agree. Does, well, no matter what you do with Newcastle, is it always going to be tainted? Possibly, but it's yes. de- certainly Manchester United are always going to be a bigger club than Newcastle and it's always going to be a bigger opportunity, even if you might not have more opportunity to win leagues or Champions Leagues. Yeah, no, so, it'll be a bigger job. Uh, so, alert the baller, Richie. Yet yeah, they have been hit with two increased player suspensions and a ban from provincial hurling. The Leinster Council took further action after the club appealed initial punishments following that brawl during their intermediate quarter final against Nave Barrog. A 48 week ban handed to one player remains unchanged, while two players who got 36 and 24 week bans have seen theirs increased to 48. The club have also been fined €3,000 and will be banned from Leinster competition the next time they qualify at either senior, intermediate or junior level. There is GAA this evening. Yeah, and a place in the Auburn Cup final is on offer to the winner of tonight's clash of Mead and Longford. That's in Ashburn. The winners of the Dublin Offaly game at Parnell Park will advance to a semi-final with Loud. The semi-final lineup in Ulster's Dr McKenna Cup will also be finalised tonight. Uh, Donegal face Monaghan in Bally Buffet with the hope of qualifying as the best group runner-up. Down have already won that section. In Section B, it's a straight shootout between Derry and Tyrone at Owen Beg, And it's the same story in Section C with Cavan playing Armagh for top spot there. OK, so this Joao Felix loan move happening. Yeah, and Atletico Madrid are hoping Joao Felix can reinvigorate his career at Chelsea. The 23-year-old has joined the Premier League club on loan until the end of the season, but only after extending his Atletico deal until 2027. Chelsea will pay Atleti €11 million Euro for Felix's services and they're covering his entire pay packet. Quite an interesting situation, this. So the sense seems to be, if you just go big picture, that Diego Simeone's time at Atletico is coming to a close and Joe Felix is not a Diego Simeone player but Atletico realised that for their next manager he probably will be. Yeah. So they want to keep him and there's even talk of getting Felix to sign a contract extension before he goes to Chelsea and falls in love there. So that's what's going on on their side. It's like how can we keep this guy mm. beyond Simeone because Simeone doesn't rate him. That's their thinking. And they put it out to market and they were looking for 21 million for six months which is 15 million transfer fee just to buy it just to win the race and then you have to pay as Richie said all of his entire pay packet which is another however many I think it's six seven million and everybody said no we're yeah. not touching that that's a rotten deal for six months yeah. oh, there was rumours during the World Cup like that like I, I'm not just saying this as a fan but honestly I mentioned on the show that Filler were in the race for it yeah. because I think they couldn't find anybody to do it and like Mendes was like hey I have a relationship with this club you know and well now what's happened is that Chelsea are going to pay his pay packet, yeah. which is the six million, and they've negotiated from fifteen million down to eleven million because they're just that desperate. But um, as Kenny Cunningham said last night, it's hard not to look at Joe Felix, impressive as he is, and not think to yourself that Chelsea have several other, yes, exactly similar. Is he the type that's going to come in in a system that's not working really and invigorate the whole thing? Well, it's maybe on 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 the injury front. Pulisic is out for a couple of months. Sterling is out for probably slightly less than that. Yeah. So he, he walks into that you know trio behind Kai Havertz instantly, and he's you know he is a step up from from Pulisic. He's probably on a par, maybe even obviously probably a better finisher than than Sterling. I just don't know if that's the best environment for him to rehab his career, which is essentially what Atletico are looking for to happen here, yeah. which is for him to get a bit of confidence, score a few goals, come back a new man and sail off into the future of 2027 as a free scoring goal machine. Like Chelsea's just in a weird situation at the minute and they don't need a player like him. Uh, their priority should have been somebody who can actually score 20 goals between yeah, the end of the striker. season yeah. Yeah. or they need backup in midfield. But like, yeah. if, this isn't, if this isn't a potential full long-term signing, what are they doing? Like it's six dropping sixteen, seventeen million on a player who has no future there, who has no real connection. So that's like you know, Sign that's what you do with a guy who's thirty four or thirty five, and you're looking for something for the end of the. Year. It's not like what I just don't. They get not realise that Vout Veghorst was on the market. That's the wow, yeah. question. <laughs> uh, Frank Lampard has been told, buddy, you don't need to worry about a thing. Oh, yeah, dead, dead vote confidence. 
Yeah. Everton owner Farhad Mashiri has indeed given his full backing to under pressure manager Frank Lampard. The Toffees are third from bottom in the Premier League. They've won just once in the last 10 league games. And Mashiri says their league position must and indeed will improve under Lampard's stewardship. I had never heard of the French Football Federation president until I think about eight, nine days ago, but he's quite the character. Yeah, he is. Yeah, the president of the French Football Federation has stepped down or indeed stepped aside, it would seem. Noel Legrat has been accused of sexual harassment and of disrespecting France legend Zinedine Zidane. The 81-year-old denies the allegations of sexual harassment and he's already apologised for his Zidane comments. Regardless, he's taking a step back, he says, from his duties, while Philippe Diallo has been installed as acting president in the meantime. Good old France. <laughs> yeah. Bernard Laporte is <laughs> is just off the front page just about know, a week. <laughs> maybe we, we're beating ourselves up over our general standard of sports administration. Here. Alan says, should tackle school not be compulsory and a prerequisite for all professional rugby players? Then this loophole could be done away with. It seems crazy they can teach this out of someone, but they're not bothering to until they take someone's head off. I mean, it's... it's it's very true, Alan. I, what Owen Farrell will be told at tackle school that he hasn't heard already is going to be interesting. I want to know more about it, though. Like, how many sessions is it? For how long? Is there Does he have a, to take is, a test? Is, is there a test at the end? Is there, like, a kind of a beginner, middling, an expert kind of level that you end up taking? Do you get a diploma? Show, Do they show me on the doll where the bad touch is. At 11. Yeah. yeah. Uh, evening, lads. The camera crew... Oh, thank you for the text, John. Camera crew recorded Eddie Howe's speech to the team at the end. Interesting move, John and Mayo. In mourning, of course, over Lee Keegan, John, I'm presuming. But, uh, so, proper camera crew and audio, because obviously the rugby dressing rooms don't have audio. Yeah. That is an interesting move. Yeah, I suppose we've seen so much of it now with yeah. the, uh, the the prime docs, the, which name escapes me at the moment. But All or nothing. Yeah, I'd say Eddie Howe sort of looks at that and goes, oh, they'd love my speeches. <laughs> I think all Let's managers think that. I guess the one thing is with all or nothing, there's quite a long cooling off period after a given speech and editing and clubs, I'm sure, have control. Whereas, you know, there was the potential Leicester win 4-0 yeah. and Eddie Howe's speech is not the the one speech he has filmed is not the one he wants out there. So there was a the touch more about out, it, but not much more. The trainer's out for the golf one, Joe. Have you seen it? No. No, not a boy. <laughs> Apparently it's good though. There's like they've got <laughs> loads of them on the go. Why, why, why? I just presumed you would have. I know you can't you know watch it now. I was, no I was with my tone there. What happened to the Ronnie O'Sullivan documentary? Uh, good question. Do you remember we was the the whole the whole post Ronnie O'Sullivan winning in April was that it was going to be the, and there was the most Ken Doherty said in the show it was the most footage yeah. that Netflix have ever had. It was going to be their best ever doc. He'd been microphoned constantly. Yeah. And it just disappeared. We've had a tennis one. We have a golf one now. Another, sure, se- the, another season. Of, uh, I haven't seen the trailer, Rich. No, it's, I think it's February 23rd. And the tennis one obviously mm. is out in about a week or so. I have heard uh, from people who've seen the golf one that it is top, 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 top. Really top. good. I mean, if ever there was a year to be doing a behind the scenes golf documentary with yeah. lots of <laughs> access and players speaking their truth, it would have been the year that Liv happened. But apparently yeah. it's it's really good. Now, will it do for golf what... Drive to Survive Ditch for Formula One is a difficult thing to predict, but apparently it really will be worth a watch. Okay. As Here for the go. tennis one, I haven't heard. I haven't heard it's great, but I, will, I I haven't heard that many reviews either, so let's hold off, I think, a little while. Maybe we should have a look look at all of the new uh, behind-the-scenes documentaries next week on the show. Any last story you want to bring us, Rich? Uh, Naomi Osaka will end on a bit of good oh, news. Yeah. She's announced her pregnancy. The four-time Grand Slam champion pulled out of this month's Australian Open earlier this week, having not struck a ball in anger since September. Osaka is hoping to return at next year's Australian Open. We wish yeah, her yeah, that's like far more pleasant news than assuming she'd pulled out due to her mental health. So that's uh, yeah. a good reason, absolutely. Uh, and it's something, funny enough, we are talking about after the break because the maternity care, certainly in, in women's football, subject of an interview on the Koi Gig podcast, it seems leaves a lot to be desired. So we're coming to that in just a few moments' time. Uh, Richie, thank you very much. Nice and lads. Michael, thank you. Thanks. Your chance to win big. News Talks Cash Machine. Now, another rollover. Missed call this afternoon. So the new number is €41,751.58. If you've entered since 5 o'clock Monday, you're in the draw, but you do need to know that new number. Text play to 57557. Get your entry in by 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon and then across the Go Loud network of stations, Barry Dunn will make a call. If your phone rings, you have to answer within five rings. The exact amount in euro and cents and the cash is yours. So 41000 
750, 1 euro, 58 cents. Over 18s only, tax cost here 50. You're playing across the goal, network stations, terms and conditions on newstalk.com. The News Round on Off The Ball with Gillette. Start your day in flow with the new Gillette Labs Razor with exfoliating bar. Some years ago, I was the victim of a serious crime. The person serving a life sentence for that crime now has an opportunity to apply for parole. But I also have an opportunity to have my voice heard by the parole board. Victims of a serious crime. Your voice counts in the parole process. Find out more and register at gov.ie forward slash parole board or call 01 474 8770. Your next move matters, so why not move better? Start your move to permanent TSB today. Apply in-app for our award-winning current account. So don't just move bank, move better. Apply in-app today. Applications for Explore Current Account in-app for over 18 personal customers. Qualifying criteria, fees and charges, terms and conditions apply. Awarded bonkers.ie Best Current Account 2022. Permanent TSB PLC is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. If you're looking for beautiful Irish-made sofas or chairs, the Finline Furniture Annual Sale is now on. All Finline's furniture comes with our unique 20-year guarantee. Showrooms open in Dublin, Cork, Galway and at our factory in County Leash. Finline have only one sale every year, so don't miss out. See finlinefurniture.ie Thomas Dach, a bubble campus of us in a mick lane of a cordial August Voltach. Parchin Keens and Old School August Far and Aaron, Oiter Fader let the shame of her in a ruined August Oiter Rachig or Nash Crown the Hun Lassadit. Irigineus Marsmuintor, New Ali, Hohohor Afraha, Hunna, a Yen and a Friach. Thomas Dach, Parchin Keen, Irigineus, La Hulskal Von Uud, Bilin a Gordron on the Olish CAO Fear Ruler and Tenulodia Danner, Tor Court University.ie slash 